Welcome back to my series on MMR. In the last video, we talked about how you get your MMR, and now that you have it, what does it mean? How do we compare this to other people? Well, there's a couple different ways. Your MMR doesn't really describe your Dota skills super accurately because every Dota player's skills are extremely varied. Like, one 3k player who only plays carry is going to have very different Dota skills than a 3k player who only plays support. There's different elements of the game that they have to learn to play at that level, so it's kind of hard to compare each other. When MMR was first released in December of 2013, Valve also gave us a sneak peek of your percentages. Now, we don't completely know if these are the same as they were when it was first released over th about three years ago, but it still gives us a good picture into how good people were then and possibly are now. If you take a look at the graph on the left side, it shows the percentile that the MMR corresponds with. So if you look at the 50th percentile, or the average Dota player, they're playing at about 2250 MMR, probably a lot lower than you expected it to be. But if you go up to the 75th percentile, we're at 2731, still not very far away from that middle point, and all the way up to the 99th percentile is 4100 MMR. Really not that much movement across it, but this is actually really expected because it's a bell curve. And what a bell curve means is that if you take all of the people that do something, there's going to be a big mass of them that are about as good as each other in the middle. So maybe you thought that middle point was a little higher, but that's all based on your friend groups. Maybe you and your friends try harder at Dota than other people. And you also have to remember all the people that might play Dota very casually, might only play it two times a month, maybe are younger than you, don't have as much time to focus on it, they don't watch as many pro games as you, they play the game casually. There's a lot of factors that go into making the average player a little bit lower than you might expect it to be. Now to look at some fun statistics about this, um, what this graph means is that 50% of all players that you randomly meet on the street are between 2000 and 2731 MMR. That's 50% of all people that play Dota. 80% of Dota players are between 1500 MMR and 3900 MMR. A massive 94% are between 1100 MMR and 4100 MMR. That's almost all of Dota players. So is it a big deal if you're not above 4100? Um, not really, and is it a big deal if you're not 5k but you are above 4100? Not at all, you're still by far one of the best Dota players in the world. Relatively, you're the top 1% of 13 million people, which is still a pretty huge number, but it's still very respectable, so try not to be so mean to people that maybe aren't quite 5k yet. Now you're probably wondering, what about those 9k MMR players, or maybe the future 10k in a year or two? Well, the reality is that they're on the graph, it's just there's so few of them that they're at these extremities of the bell curve. What percentage are they? Well, it's actually pretty easy, we can just calculate this. 2.975 e to the negative 7th percentile. Nice job, you're one of the best. So these high MMR allies are just that, they're talented, freakishly good at Dota outliers. They're not even close to the average curve, and they've probably always had that potential, but they also probably worked at it to get better and better at Dota. And if you compare MMRs today with what MMRs were then, it's a little differently, because when the leaderboards first came out, the average MMR was somewhere approaching five, uh, approaching 6k, excuse me, and sometimes 6.5k. I believe back then nobody was 7k, and there weren't that many people that were over 6k either. But what changed really was that everybody now knew where they were. The people that were already naturally the best players in the world were the ones that just were really good and maybe they tried harder than others. So now that MMR existed and the leaderboards existed, people really ramped it up and they tried harder. And that's what happened to the bell curve over time. There might be some cases where inflation exists on Dota 2's MMR ecosystem, but I think it's actually kind of unlikely. What I think happened instead is that all of those players that now see themselves on the ranking, they just started trying harder. So if you take our original bell curve and you pick out all these points for a 5.2k player and a 5.6k player and a 6.2k player, all those three guys started trying really hard in their solo rank because they truly thought that they were the best or maybe they just played a lot. And now all of a sudden those are the guys that are doing everything they can to refine how they play solo rank. They only pick the best heroes in the meta. They always counterpick their opponents if possible. They do their best to win every game. They only go smart item builds. They never screw around. They communicate with their allies. They try not to be toxic. Those are the guys that are actually getting better and better at playing pubs every single year. And their MMRs will increase. So really we're just seeing the bell curve stretch out a little bit more, most likely. Now let's talk about potential inflation. I just said that I think the bell curve's stretching, but we have to talk about the ways that inflation could possibly exist. And there are some cases that do genuinely provide inflation or deflation. 
Now there could be inflation like currency, but that only happens if one MMR stops being equal to one MMR. And that doesn't happen in Dota because it's the only currency and we have the Federal Reserve of Gabin to make sure that one MMR is always equal to one MMR. So how do you get inflation into the system or deflation? Well, think about the Dota 2 MMR ecosystem as a, a giant cloud of buckets. So every single player has one bucket in here. and and in each bucket you have water corresponding to how much MMR you have. Now, if the total water in the whole ecosystem ends up decreasing or increasing in a ratio of how many buckets there are, then that means the average MMR has gone up or gone down. But the only way to gain or lose MMR with most cases is to actually win a match. You'll win a game, everybody on your team will gain 25 MMR, and everybody you play against loses 25 MMR. So all these little buckets in this giant cloud are really kind of just trading water around. The trading process never really stops. Like There's no extra water gained, and there's no extra water loss that just gets lost in the system. Except for a few cases. Let's talk about them. If a player's at 1 MMR and they lose a game, do they lose 25 more? They can't. They, they won't go to negative 25, they'll just stay at 1. So that's going to mean less MMR exists in the ecosystem but that's not the only case that we can think of what about let's say some player is playing a ranked game and they abandon and they never come back they automatically lose 25 mmr and their team's likely to lose because they're playing 4v5 but what if their team actually wins that's four players getting 25 mmr that guy loses his 25 mmr and his opponents all lose 25 mmr as well that's actually six people losing mmr and four gaining it that means deflation the opposite of what we had in the one MMR case, which there's probably not that many one MMR players anyways, except for people that are actually trying to lose on purpose. So that might actually offset the MMR inflation from the other example. And what about TBD MMR? You've got nine players that already have their MMR. They win or lose based on the game. But what about the one guy on your team that's still TBD? Does he lose his MMR when he loses his games? Um, maybe. We don't really know. Valve knows and we don't. But the reality is probably because you have to remember that Valve wants to accurately rate people because this is another way that you can put inflation or deflation in the system. If you take a new player and he's a 6k player and you rank him in and he's 4.8k MMR, he's actually better than his MMR which means that he has a really high chance to win his games until he's 6k MMR again, the place that he should be at which means that you're taking MMR out of the pool to give it to this guy on his account. You're actually deflating the system by being inaccurately ranked. And the same thing happens if a bad player gets a rank that he doesn't deserve. If he's too high, that's actually inflating the MMR system because he walks in with too much MMR, he starts losing a bunch of games because he's bad, and all of a sudden there's an extra 500, 1000 MMR into the MMR ecosystem. Now what happens to these accounts? Um, this is maybe a little bit more complex, but if the player that's really high MMR makes a smurf, ranks his account up to 6k, goes through the grind, and just stops playing, what happens then? Well, in some ways, if he never plays his account again, he's now harvested a thousand MMR from his surroundings, and his account just dies. That should deflate the system, because if we remove dead accounts from the system, then they aren't a part of the giant ecosystem anymore. They've subtracted water, and then they've removed their bucket, and they've just disabled their Steam account. Same thing happens with a player who's 2k, and he says, I know that I'm 3k, I deserve this. He makes a new account, he tries really hard, and he gets placed at 3k, and he's so excited. That he jumps into a system where his MMR is too high, he bleeds it away, and he says, well, this account is, is junk, I'm not going to play it anymore, I'll go back to my old account. So again, same thing. Puts too much MMR into the system, bleeds it out, and stops playing on his account. That should deflate the system. But how do we put all these things together? And the reality is that it's very difficult. It helps to be Valve, it helps to be a data processor, it helps to have a possibly PhD in statistics. But they can adjust on purpose with inflation or deflation based on what's happening. They could take an M a player who goes to their MMR placement matches and they can intentionally rank them like 50 MMR too high. And if they do that, that player is barely going to notice it's 50 MMR. But what will happen is that that's 50 more MMR that will bleed into the pool. So even if, if there's this idea that there is inflation in Dota 2, it can be controlled within the system based on new players registering. Now what about those guys in the middle of the bell curve that haven't moved at all? I mean, you've got these stretches for the outer limits you've got players that are now six seven eight nine mmr 9k mmr and you've got some players at the other end that probably should be like minus 400 if they are really working at getting worse over time like those high mmr players but what about the people right in the middle like what if you're the same mmr for three years you've been playing solo queues the whole time you're just the same as you always were well you're probably still at the same average. It doesn't necessarily mean that you haven't improved at all. If your MMR doesn't move, it doesn't mean that you've gotten worse at the game. 
you can improve at Dota and have your MMR be the same. But the only way that happens is if all of the people in the MMR ecosystem are also playing games and you they just improve at the same rate as you. So everybody that's around your MMR are still as good at Dota as you are. Even if you've gotten better over time and they've gotten better over time and you've updated to the meta every time and you're better at last hitting than you used to be. The reality is that you have to get much better than you were in the past to see huge gains in terms of MMR. So don't be too discouraged. If you're at that average 50th percentile mark, you're you're really truly average because you're also average at getting better at Dota, but but that's kind of interesting as well. So don't be too discouraged. If your MMR is the same, you're not getting worse. You're staying the same, but getting better. You're just staying the same as other people, which is really what percentages are all about. Let's finally break down what MMR truly means from a Dota win rate perspective in the next video.